What's good, family? I'm actually possibly going to go to bed at a decent hour, but I drank some coffee because I had to do some extra work, so I don't know. <laughs> um, before I go any further, let's go before the Lord in prayer. I got something I want to say. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word and this opportunity, and I just pray that you get the glory out of all of it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. I'm going to keep it short and brief tonight. <clears throat> Not everybody is your assignment. While it's good to want to help people, there's nothing wrong with that. You have to be mindful of who it is God has called you to help because you can be involving yourself in situations that take more from you than God intended. In other words, imagine having change inside of a pocket on your pants, but that pocket has a hole. You keep putting things in your pocket. You keep putting change in your pocket. It keeps falling down and you keep losing something of value. That's what happens when you invest yourself into people that are not God's assignments on your life. You're pouring and pouring and pouring. You're wearing yourself out. And it's not really benefiting because you're not where you're supposed to be. You're out of position. Does that make sense? The Bible says zeal without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. And it's okay to have a lot of zeal, a lot of passion, zeal and passion. But you need the knowledge and the understanding to recognize God's will for your life. Is this for me to do, Father? I think about Jesus when the woman with the issue of blood touched him and virtue left his body. He stopped what he was doing. He said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, look at all these people around you. You're asking who touched you because he was surrounded. But he was saying it because he recognized that power, virtue left him. And he realized it was her that had touched him. When you're doing the things of the Lord, virtue does leave you. That's why you'd be so fatigued, so tired. It's not just energy, but it's like the power God's put in you, it leaves. And imagine you're inputting a lot of that virtue into something that God never intended. You're wasting your time and you're wasting your energy and you're depleting yourself unnecessarily. Does that make sense? Basically what I just said. So you have to be discerning and recognize what is an agenda? What is a setup? What has the enemy brought in your life to distract you from what God has called you to do? God will give you assignments, but there are some things that God didn't call you to do. And you're sitting there trying to fix things. And all you're doing is making your life difficult because you're trying to take on responsibilities that you were not ordained or assigned or anointed to do. So go to the Lord, seek his will and say, Father, is this of you? Or is this a counterfeit? And he will reveal to you what it is. And then from that point, take heed. I've had experiences like that where I've tried to help people. And everything I just said is what took place. I was depleted, fatigued. And then I was susceptible for an attack from the enemy. And that's what happened. While I'm worn out, vulnerable, and the enemy would have tried to pounce. It threw a person. So again, I would say this. If you have questions, go to your source. Uh, the Bible says, I think it's Psalm 119. I'm going to tag it. It says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you feel like you're in a dark place, go to his word. God will shed light on the situation. Remove yourself from people. Separate yourself and spend time in his presence alone. And he will minister to you and tell you what it is you need to do. I pray this word encouraged you. I pray it blessed you. And I pray that you were able to recognize that we're called to who God has called us to. We can't be um, there for everybody because that's not what we're called to do. Jesus can be there for everybody, and he gives the believers his spirit. So we as the church go and help in our ordained assignments. It's teamwork. It's a collaborative effort, but you cannot fix everybody's problems, and you must go where God's called you. <clears throat> I'm getting sleepy, y'all. Somebody get off. If there's anybody watching and you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father, the only way to do so is to have one with his son, this comes from a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Just repeat after me. If you believe he died on the cross and that God the Father raised him back from the dead, you will be saved from the penalty of your sins. The reason why this is important is because when you die, if you don't know Jesus, your sins can, your, uh, you can't save yourself from the penalty of your sins. You'll be going to hell. The Bible says, broad is the road that leads to destruction and narrow is the way that leads to salvation. How few are those who find it? And God is saying, I don't want you to go on that broad road, <clears throat> but he gives you a choice as to what you want to do with your eternity. You can be eternally separated from God in hell and anguish, misery, the lake of fire, all the above. Or you can go and have everlasting life because of receiving his son, Jesus, as your Lord and your savior, being adopted in the family of God. Will there be times where you'll be hated because you're a Christian? Yeah. Will there be times where you'll be rejected by others because you're a Christian? Yeah. Sometimes there'll be conflict in your own household because you belong to him, because his spirit rests upon you. But the Bible says, be of good cheer. He says, when men revile you, speak all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. <clears throat> Great is your reward in heaven, 
for in the same way they did, uh, they did you, they did to the prophets beforehand. So just trust me when I say you're in good company. So, and it, it, it's, it's by faith in Jesus that makes you saved, not by your works. Otherwise you'd be able to boast and compare yourself to other people. So if you're interested, just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. If you did that, your name is written in the book of life and there are angels celebrating in heaven. I recommend you get in a Bible-based church and watch God transform your life. <laughs> Y'all can tell I'm getting sleepy. I've had a long day. Um, I had a funny story earlier. I don't know if I tell it right and it's funny. I'll tell it another time. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Peace.